Hello, welcome to my channel. I thought I'd try some short videos for those of you who don't have much time to spend watching a half an hour or so, so this video is almost eight minutes long. Please like and subscribe, share with your friends. That helps my channel grow and I'd appreciate that. So today's video is a hydrangea. I've done this painting many, many times before, but today it's a single hydrangea and I've done it in blue, which is a very popular color. I love blue myself. And um, I just did the one with some leaves and stems and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do all of those elements. I didn't show you how to do the background because it adds time, but basically I used titanium white, French ultramarine blue, and cad yellow light and I just scumbled that on all over the place and then blended it with my Dollar Tree um, powder brushes and and that left me a pretty nice well lit background I feel. For the hydrangea painting, I changed my palette to titanium white, primary yellow, raw sienna, raw umber, French ultramarine blue, sap green and alizarin crimson. Using titanium white and French ultramarine blue, I then mixed a pale blue which is going to be the base of my flower. And um, I draw um, a circle where the flower is going to be and then I use raw sienna to draw in the stems and where the leaves will be and um, that raw sienna is so neutral that you won't see much of it in the end of the painting because I'll be adding highlight and shadow um, to it using other paint colors and um, it'll be hard to pick out the raw sienna but it makes a great sketching medium. I mix sap green with, um, I don't think I mixed it with much, probably some yellow in this case, and sort of roughly put in my leaves, drawing my brush from the outer edge of the leaf into the center vein. Um, this gives a, a very nice leaf shape. The brush does all the work and um, I also took some of the green down the, the uh, stem, but I'll be adding other colors to that stem. So now you can see I've got my leaves in place in a mid-tone to which I'll add highlights and shadow. And um, I think I decided the light was coming from the right. The next thing I do is use a half inch flat and I'm going to swipe in some petal shapes. Um, it's just to get a, a sort of roughness to the flower over which I put a more defined petal shape. Uh, and um, this gives texture to the flower and makes it seem to sort of leap off the page a little bit. Um, with hydrangeas, they are made up of four petaled rosettes, florets, not rosettes. And um, you, you want to see the depth of the flower. But I'm painting this in, in a mid-tone and I'll add highlights and shadow to this. Okay, so using French ultramarine blue and titanium white, I'm going to make an even lighter blue, much paler than the um, original blue that I put on the base and add highlights. All your highlights will be on the side that is hit by the light as it comes across and the other side will be dark. I think I missed a video in here because um, I can see I've got my shadow side in already so I must have added a darker blue. Just to add a little interest for the, to the flower, it won't show up very much in the end. I've mixed alizarin crimson in with the puddle of blue that I have, just to give me a slight sort of purple color. 
and I just sort of dab that on and little bits of it will show through at the end just adding a little colour interest. I use a round to give the petals more definition and um, I don't always draw in four petals of the floret. I'd sometimes do two and a quick swipe across to indicate another one and leave it at three or sometimes I just do um, all four um, petals but one of the petals will be a swipe and not shown clearly because it will be the closest petal to you. I hope I've explained that clearly but anyway you can see what I'm doing. If your petals overlap your leaves, that's all right too. It gives added depth to the painting. It makes it more dimensional. You can go over this as many times as you like if it doesn't look quite right to you. You can add darker to light, lighter to dark where it may catch the light. Everything adds to the dimension of the flower, the depth of the flower. I like to get my whole painting done with a mid-tone and then go in with my shadows and my highlight. Here I'm working with a Q-tip. And I'm just going to put in an odd number of the centers. I've mixed sap green with some primary yellow and um, got this nice pale green and um, it pops a little bit. And I'm just putting in an odd number, as I say, of these little centers. You don't want to dot the whole flower. Um, it will look strange to your eye if you do that and the dots will overtake the whole painting. I'm mixing sap green, French ultramarine blue and a little touch of the raw, raw umber and I'm going to put in a shadow side to my leaves and um, the one right underneath the flower will be quite dark on that side but there will still be an area that gets touched uh, by a little of the light coming from the right and so um, that will get a highlight to it. My highlight colour is primary yellow with um, titanium white added to it and I put it in my central pool of colour. Um, that's really how I paint. I don't make separate pools of colour. I just use that central one most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. I find it sort of adds a little bit to the painting to get little hints of other colours popping in. I often paint with flats, I usually use them for my leaves and I turn it on its edge um, to give me that centre vein. Now I'm working on the stems and I'm using raw umber to underline the stem and give it a little dimension. But it's not the only colour I use on my stems. I like my painting to pop a little bit and I love alizarin crimson. And I think it makes the stems look quite real. I've also used um, the Taylor colours 
I say Taylor, but I'm English and my teacher was English. And so that's how she said it. But uh, it's spelt T-H-A. I think it's L-O. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, um, in this case, I'm using alizarin crimson to the same effect. And you can see it does wonderful things. Um, you can add it to your leaves. I think it's a little strong here, so um, I'm going over it. But um, it can make your painting pop if you can get more color into it. And um, you'd be surprised what colors you can actually use in the painting and get away with it reading normal, whatever normal is. For a highlight to the stem, I'm mixing a sort of orange colour and um, I sometimes even go brighter than this. I like to put in the odd bare twig. I think it adds to the effect. I'm going to call this done and sign my name and I'm using a paint marker for that purpose. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it actually ended up at 14 minutes long. I don't know why that is. But anyway, don't forget to share with your friends, like and subscribe. That helps me a lot and I'd really appreciate that. And thank you very much for watching. And I'm going to show you another short video. I'll try to make it even shorter. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.